This is a specimen which shows a segment of small bowel, and here we're looking at the mucosal surface, and there is a large, relatively circumscribed, somewhat lobulated mural mass. Let's take a closer look. This mass is rounded or spherical, and it has got a tan cut surface with these patchy, dark, blackish areas of hemorrhage. If we look at the mucosa, we can see that it's still intact overlying the mass. Therefore, this mass is not arising from the mucosa. Rather, it is arising from the wall of the gut, which is uh, in the submucosal layer or from the muscularis propria. This is the classical gross appearance of a gastrointestinal stromal tumour. There are several types of stromal or mesenchymal tumours that can occur in the wall of the gut. The likelihood of the type of tumour depends very much on the location. For example, in the esophagus, the commonest mesenchymal tumour is a smooth muscle tumour, usually benign, hence a leiomyoma. In the stomach and in the small bowel, it is more likely to be a gist or gastrointestinal stromal tumour. And another differential diagnosis for a mesenchymal tumour in the gut wall is a peripheral nerve sheath tumour such as a schwannoma. So the three main, so the three main differentials are smooth muscle tumours, gists, and schwannoma. Let's take a look at another example. Here is an example of a small tumour arising in the stomach, and this is the gastric mucosa with the mucosal folds. We can see that this tumour is actually not continuous or not arising from the gastric mucosa, but rather from beneath the mucosa. And it has a very uh, whitish cut surface. This is a very low power microscopy view showing you the gastric mucosa, which is intact, the submucosa, and then we have the tumour here. Sometimes the tumour may actually erode or ulcerate into the gastric mucosa, giving rise to GI bleeding. Now the tumour looks relatively pink on low power, and this being a mesenchymal tumour, it is usually composed of spindle cells, so the cells are very elongated, pulled out nuclei, and similarly, the shape of the cells is also very elongated, very long and thin. Classically, these cells are arranged in parallel bundles, which we refer to as fascicles. Sometimes you can actually see that the nuclei kind of line up, forming a row, and then there is another row here. So each row is known as a palisade. Nuclear palisading can be seen in gists as well as schwannomas. So because they can look fairly similar, these mesenchymal tumours, um, on microscopy, we do need some additional ancillary tests to tell them apart, and we employ immunohistochemistry for this. The two best and most specific markers for GISTs would be CD117. You can see here it is very positive, so a brown color means that the stain is positive. And the other marker is DOG1, which is also very accurate, very sensitive, and rather specific for GISTs. In contrast, you can see here this other stain known as Desmin. Um, this antibody is actually negative in gists, but it's positive in smooth muscle tumours such as leiomyoma and leiomyosarcoma. So this is how we tell them apart and make the diagnosis on microscopy. Hence, in summary, there is a mural nodule within the wall of the small bowel. It is relatively well circumscribed, it is fairly lobulated, and it has a tan cut surface with patchy areas of hemorrhage, and this represents a mesenchymal tumour. And in the context of the small bowel, or if this was in the stomach, the most likely mesenchymal tumour would be the gist or gastrointestinal stromal tumour.